So over the weekend, the K-Dems convention took place, and even though Joe Biden was conspicuously absent, I believe that pretty much every other presidential candidate attended. And there were some really exciting moments. Some of them were incredibly heartwarming, and, you know, it really made me feel good. And no, I'm not talking about that hug between Bernie Sanders and Tulsi Gabbard, because even if I think that was adorable, what was really heartwarming to me was seeing some of these centrist Democrats faceplant and faceplant hard. So the first one I want to show you is um, a video of the guy who watched porn with his mom, John Hickenlooper. This is what happened when he thought it'd be a good idea to denounce socialism in front of a crowd of liberal voters. Socialism is not the answer. I was re-elected. I was re-elected in a purple state in 2014, one of the worst years of Democrats in a quarter century. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> now, I don't know about you guys, but whenever a Democrat tells me what we can't do and what we can't have, there's nothing that makes me feel more inspired than that. <laughs> I mean, learn how to read a root a room. You're talking about how horrible socialism is in front of a crowd of liberal voters who know exactly how capitalism has not just devastated our country, but literally devastated the planet. Learn how to read a room, John Hickenlooper, but he can't, hence why he's polling at 0%. Now, speaking of another candidate who's polling at 0%, John Delaney. We're going to spend some time on him because at this convention, he literally thought it would be a good idea to take to the stage and denounce Medicare for All, a policy that is overwhelmingly popular, not just among voters, but among Republicans and especially popular among people in that crowd. Here's what happened when he tried to tell them that Medicare for All is bad. But we, as, as Democrats, Democrats, to build, build an economy, economy that works. But it's, it's got to be with smart policies. policies. Medicare, Medicare for all may sound good, good but it's, it's actually, actually not, not good, good policy, policy, nor is it good politics. politics. I'm, I'm telling you. you. I'm telling you. A hundred. We, we should have universal health care. We should have universal health care. We should have universal health care, but it shouldn't be a kind of health care that kicks 150 million Americans off their health care. That's not smart policy. He just kept going. He was getting booed, and he still continued to talk about how horrible Medicare for All is. <laughs> I don't think they agree, John. I don't think they agree. Now, for those of you not counting, he was literally booed for over a minute. That is insane. It goes to show you that the base of the Democratic Party, they are progressive. Really, Americans in general are progressive because when you look at public opinion polls, they support the Green New Deal. They support a federal jobs guarantee. They support raising the minimum wage. They support Medicare for all. They support legalizing marijuana. So when you tell them that their ideas and the policies that they support are bad, what do you think is going to happen? He says, Medicare for all may sound good, but it isn't good policy, nor is it good politics. Except it is good policy. Medicare for all is designed to function very much like Canada's healthcare system functions. And it has a high approval rating. And not only is it good policy, it's good politics, because guess what? People like it. So 
good politics is doing things that are supported by the overwhelming majority of the electorate. So by definition, it's good politics, but it's also good policy. Because it's policy that stops medical bankruptcies. It stops people who die because they don't have health insurance. Or maybe they do have health insurance. But they're underinsured and they need a particular medical procedure that isn't covered by their insurance provider. So it's both good policy and good politics. So you're wrong. And they were telling you that you're wrong by booing you. Um, additionally, he says, quote, we should have universal health care, but it shouldn't be a kind of health care that kicks 150 million Americans off their health care. That's not smart policy. So I need you to understand that he's being intentionally disingenuous here. He's framing Medicare for all, which expands health care to 100% of the population. He's saying that that is kicking people off. I mean, what a deceitful liar you are. And the reason why he's doing this is because he's a shill for the health insurance industry. He said multiple times, look, I am in support of a universal health care plan, but I'm in favor of keeping the health insurance companies. Oh, okay, so you're not in favor of universal health care. You're not. Because so long as you don't eliminate that profit motive, guess what's going to happen? People will continue to die and go bankrupt because if we have to depend on these profit-driven healthcare companies, that's what will keep happening. And we know that he's being disingenuous because he was actually confronted about this lie that people lose insurance by getting Medicare for all in an interview with Cenk Uygur of the Young Turks, where Cenk Uygur pressed him on this. Look at his response. <laughs> I just think if we run on taking healthcare away from 150 million Americans, I think well, we'll you're not lose. taking health care away, right. nor are you even taking insurance away. But we're taking their health care and 70% and of And giving them, like them a better one. What is that? That's him not knowing how to respond when he's called out for his bullshit. Because to literally say that giving people Medicare for all is them losing health insurance, you're just being a disingenuous liar. And guess what? The good news is people see through it. Hence why you were booed. Now, he has been disingenuous when it comes to this issue in a number of other areas. So I want to show you another quick clip of Jen Uger's interview with him, which I'll link to the full thing because Jen did a phenomenal job at pressing him on this. He revealed how ignorant he is, but he explains why we shouldn't do Medicare for all. This is reason number two why he thinks it's a bad idea. You acknowledge though that Medicare is incredibly popular. Medicare is popular, but remember... One of the reasons Medicare is popular is because Medicare beneficiaries, the overwhelming majority of them, buy supplemental plans. No, 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 no. That is completely backwards. Medicare is popular in spite of the fact that people have to buy supplemental insurance. Why do people get Medicare Advantage plans in the first place? It's because Medicare in its current state, in spite of it being popular, still does have some gaps. Hence why when we talk about Medicare for all, we say expand and improve Medicare for all because we can't expand it in its current state because that won't be sufficient. So the reason why people buy these supplemental plans is not because they want to. They would prefer to not have to do that, John, but they do that because they have to. Imagine like this line of thinking, someone who buys Medicare Advantage, but they do it because they like it. Oh, I just love that there's these gaps that force me to buy Medicare Advantage. I like that. Don't close those gaps. I want to keep paying extra money for this supplemental care. Who, who thinks like that? Who would want that? Like, you'd have to be delusional to accept John Delaney's argument here. And this is what we hear from Democrats. Oh, well, people on Medicare, currently they buy these supplemental plans that they don't want to lose. They buy them because they don't have a choice. Nobody wants supplemental care. 10 times out of 10, if you ask these people on Medicare, hey, would you like those gaps in Medicare to be closed so you don't have to buy supplemental care? They're going to tell you yes, because that's rational. That's reasonable. That's what a self-interested individual wants. So by you saying that they somehow enjoy the fact that they have to go out of their way to buy supplemental care is borderline just idiotic, and I'm trying to refrain from calling him names, but you make it hard, John, because you're lying. You're just straight up lying. You know better. You're a smart guy, but you're lying. You're being intentionally deceitful because you want to protect the health insurance companies. Now, someone else who saw right through him is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and 
I love what she tweeted out. She said, since there's so many people running for president and not enough for Senate, instead of obsessing over who's a front runner, maybe we can start with some general eliminations. This awful, untrue line got booed for a full minute. John Delaney, thank you, but please sashay away. <laughs> I mean, you're polling at 0%. Nobody likes you. You're getting booed by Democrats, the people who you have to win over. What are you still doing in the race? You're not going to win. Nobody likes you. You're lying about Medicare for All, something that is overwhelmingly popular. She's got a point. Now, she followed up by saying Medicare for All is sound policy. One may disagree with it, but plenty of other countries have single payer and better outcomes than the United States. Medicare for All is good politics. It polls very well in swing states. Third way, aka lobbyist-backed Democrats, will lose the presidency to Donald Trump. And she's exactly right, because guess what? We tried running a centrist against Donald Trump. Do you remember what happened? He won. So you've got to do things that excite the base. And the base is very explicit in telling you, I don't like when you attack Medicare for All. I am booing you for attacking Medicare for All. Now, can you guess what his response was? We call him a centrist to be polite, but really he's more of a right winger because if you are a centrist and you're, if you're in between Democrats and Republicans, two right wing parties, you're just a right winger. If you are to the right of Tories in the UK on healthcare, you're just a right winger. Now his response was basically, debate me. In typical right wing fashion, he says, Hey, AOC, we have the same goal universal health care for everyone. No, you don't. We just have different ways of getting there. Health care is the number one issue for voters. So let's debate the way forward. Any show of your choosing, health care is too important for tweets. We need real discussion. Now, he followed up with some more tweets about this because he was clearly irritated that he was booed. And each time he tweeted, he got ratioed, sometimes ratioed into oblivion. He says, intolerance to alternative points of view is not what the Democratic Party should be about. Don't we get enough of that from Trump? So he's comparing people who booed him and who don't like what he's saying to Trump when you're actually closer to Trump, John. Because ideologically speaking, if you're in favor of the same policy that Donald Trump supports, not in favor of Medicare for all, you're closer to him. We're the furthest from him. And I love how he says, oh, you're being intolerant. So he's playing the victim. I mean, he's basically a right winger. Just run as a Republican. Wait four years. You're young enough. Run as a Republican. You could be a moderate Republican. You could be John Kasich 2.0. Like, what are you doing running in a Democratic Party that you're clearly not aligned with? He also says another point. If you are booing Democrats, do you really expect the country to trust what you have to say if you can't listen respectfully to people in your own party? Let's raise the discourse and not fall down to the level of the president. Except the great thing about this is we're not the ones running for president. The people booing you, they're not the ones running for president. You are. So they don't have to win over anybody's trust. They don't have to win over your trust. They don't have to win over the rest of the electorate's trust. You are the one who has to win over their trust, not the other way around, not the other way around. So to even bring up this point is absurd. Hey, don't you know that if you boo people, you're not going to be able to win them over? You're not going to win over their trust? Okay, do I need to? <laughs> so, I mean, this KDM's convention was certainly interesting. I'm going to get to what Bernie Sanders said in a speech that I really like, but I just, I had to shine a spotlight on the Democrats polling at 0% because they got the exact reception that they deserve and that they should have expected. You're not going to win anyone who's liberal over by shitting on socialism and talking about how horrible Medicare for All is. That's not going to work. Maybe a couple years earlier, back in 2016, you know, you would have had some sway, but progressives are surging and we've won people over. So now you don't get to just shit on our policy that we've been fighting for and shit on the policy that grassroots activists have been fighting for and think that they're going to welcome you with open arms. No, they're going to boo you because you deserve to be booed because you're a liar. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. And he's doing a really, really good job. 
Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly. 